Good morning. It is Big Joe and Laura here on Mix 95.7 Grand Rapids Best Mix, welcoming you to Wednesday, August 28th, 2024. If you're keeping track, which I am, this is one day that I showed up in a row to work on time. Uh, Barely, yes. We're, we'll give you that one. On time is on time, baby. I mean, within a minute, but on time. So how are you doing today, Laura? I'm good. How are you? Uh, well, I'm lucky. I feel like that severe weather we got yesterday afternoon. Uh, I saw it, but luckily we have power, no down lines. There's some like little branches and stuff in my spot, but whoa, it got nasty. Oh yeah. I was at the mall yesterday when it rolled in. I, we, I took the little guy to walk around because it was way too hot for us to go outside. And as I loaded him up in the car, I noticed there were some pretty sketchy looking gray clouds above us. And <laughs> Within 30 seconds to a minute, it's just started pouring. And thank God we got in the car and everything. But we watched it roll through the, the parking lot at the Woodland Mall. And, I mean, it it flooded. There was probably about an, almost a half inch of water in the mall parking lot for a split second. And then every drain. I, I was just waiting for those kids from TikTok with the rake to come through and just start, like, cleaning the drain so that they would actually kind of, you know, go a little bit faster. Yeah. But, it was crazy. I am just so glad, though, that it seems like almost I think everybody's okay. I didn't see any major incidents. I mean, power out, of course, yeah. and that's very dangerous. Shout out to all the people working on getting the power restored. I think most of the areas like Rockford, Cedar Springs, that were really hit hard, hopefully should be fully good if you're not now by later this afternoon. Absolutely. So uh, let us know what you're seeing in your world. You can always send us a DM in the Mix 95 7 app. Yeah, or give us a call 616-600-0957. Kick a thing off it's harry styles adore you it's time for big joe and laura's need to know news on mix 95 7 severe weather rolled across west michigan yesterday many in rockford and near cedar springs were probably hit the hardest with over 100,000 people without power at one time yesterday because of those strong winds and down power lines now the power is expected to be restored today for most people that are still without it but wow it was insane listen to this woman in rockford talking about the weather yesterday all of a sudden the skies just turned really dark and i um, came running up here to to check it out um, and just kind of watch as things were kind of flying through the air and then I heard the cracking of the tree and I turned and watched as the wires just got pulled right out of my sister's house right next door. She wasn't wrong. It really did roll up. I was at the Woodland Mall when it came through here in the Grand Rapids area and thankfully I got the little guy in the car just in time for us to sit in the parking lot and watch it go by but it was, I mean, the parking lot was flooded within minutes. Oh yeah, I was driving. I was at like the East Belt Line, the Meyer there. I was coming back home on 96 West and I see tree leaves and limbs like flying across the highway. I'm like, this feels like the movie Twister. I yeah. don't like it. And shout out to all the people working hard to restore the power. Be safe out there. Absolutely. Now, we know that local apple growers are seeing an early harvest this year, but now they're expecting a really big one too. The Michigan Apple Committee announced that they believe that Michigan's orchards will deliver about 30.5 million bushels of apples this fall and approximately 1.2 billion pounds of apples. Now, that sounds like a lot. It is a lot because uh, it's kind of rare for us to have three really big seasons in a row, and it looks like we're going to have a third one. We normally only produce about 25 million bushels, so we're making five to six more million bushels every year. That's a pretty good thing. All right, well, what are we going to do with all of them? We got apple pie. Apple we got crisp. Caramel apples. Ooh, um, apple chicken. I don't know. Listen, there's lots of things we could do. Apple teenies. Just give me an apple and some of that caramel dip. I'd be totally happy with that, too. And for your final need to know news story, we're heading down to Texas to meet a 10 year old named Kennedy who's been fighting cancer since she was two. What a trooper. Her parents surprised her yesterday with some awesome news. With the help Kennedy. of some people, me and daddy don't even know, strangers from an internet campaign, um, we had something we wanted really bad for you and uh, you can open this to reveal and see if you can figure out what what it is it's taylor swift ticket yay we're gonna figure out my outfit yes obvi oh good for her after kennedy's first 12 weeks of chemo she will be going to the airs tour we'd love to see that well i hope you enjoy kennedy it's a magical night that's big joe and laura's need to know news on mix 95 7 mix 95 7 it is big joe and laura and I want to tell a story that I'm not necessarily proud of, but maybe some of you can relate. Uh, 616-600-0957. Over the weekend, 
My husband's friends from Boston, who are very rich, fancy people, uh, were in town and they went to Traverse City to spend the weekend. And they're like, hey, we got an Airbnb, fancy dinner reservations and golf plans. You guys don't have to pay for anything. We know you're new parents and money's tight. Just come up here and have a good weekend Dang, with us. Dang, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, we got to play an amazing golf course. We got to have some amazing food. But I am going to go ahead and say that I don't know if it's because I have been with a little guy for nine months and now I'm feral or I never had these skills, but I did two of the tackiest or trashiest things I've ever done. And I did not, one of them I did not mean to do. The other one I, I kind of don't take back. All right. Well, which one are you going to tell us about first? I'll tell you the first in the order that they happen. So we were golfing uh, early on in the day. We got there, got ready to go. Uh, we, we golfed at the Grand Traverse Golf Club, which is like one of the top 10 hardest clubs in the country or something like that. It's a Jack Nicholas uh, designed it. It's an incredibly hard golf course. So naturally, as someone who's played golf once this year and like three times last year, I didn't do so great. So we were, you know, a few holes in by like the, before the first nine was over, I'd lost every single ball I had showed up with. Did you play 18 holes? Well, we attempted. Didn't quite get to the end because it just took so long. And and there were people in front of us that were slowing us down significantly. (laughs) It wasn't our fault. We had a good pace in spite of the fact that we were absolutely terrible. So, okay. But what did you do if you ran out of, like, were those all your balls? Uh, yeah, all the ones I had with me. I mean, I had some back in West Michigan, but that wasn't going to do me very good. So they gave us a few <laughs> few balls because they had been to Costco and they had the Kirkland's ones. And so we played the rest of the round. I ended with one single golf ball by the time we ended up leaving to go for dinner. And on the way out, we had to drive back down the golf course, like backwards the way we came so we could get back. And um, the first hole is right next to the driving range. And there were a lot of very ill-shot golf balls all over the side of the golf course in an area that wasn't the driving range, but it was like right along the golf cart pack. So I got my husband to stop. I picked up like eight of them, threw them in my bag and carried on. And so now I have eight range balls from this very high golf. <laughs> so you're like, okay, take a ball, leave a ball. Is yeah. that what you were kind of thinking? I mean, listen, I donated at least eight to them. I feel like it's only fair that I get them back. They're not going to miss those range balls. It's perfectly fine. They go through them so much and, and replace them, whatever. So they've been smacked around a lot. They're going to be fine. Um, that that made me feel a little trashy, but then I ruined the night even further once we went to dinner later on and for immediately afterwards, we go to this very fancy restaurant that's inside of a very old building. It's in a wine cellar. It's super expensive. We had the very last reservation of the night. They closed at nine. We had the nine o'clock reservation. So we get there. I want to take a nice little tasteful photo of my uh, charcuterie board so I can post it up on our Instagram to be like, look how bougie I am at a fancy dinner. And I pick my cell phone up to do the over the table shot, you know, where you like kind of hold it. Oh, yeah, in that's the probably air. like the best view. Yeah, because I just I don't want us in it and all that. And I just try to make it a nice over the top view. Well, as I get it all the way up into place, my cell phone slips out of my fingers. It comes crashing down into my little like your self-serving plate that you get for the charcuterie board. And the, the loudest noise I've ever made in my entire life, not even on purpose. It crashes. Everyone in the restaurant comes to a screeching halt and then just turns and looks at our table. One of the final tables left in the I was going to say, they're probably already mad because like you had the last reservation or the last time slot. So not, like, Not my fault. They shouldn't have offered it if they didn't want us to come in then. And I wouldn't have booked it that late anyway, to be fully honest, because I think it's a nightmare yeah, but you're, to eat that you're, late. You're staying even later. Like, let me take a photo yeah. of my food. Crash. <laughs> boom. Buzz. So everyone at this nice restaurant, I'm sweaty. I've just played golf. I stole the golf balls. I've now crashed the things in the plate. I don't think I could ever show my face in Traverse City again. I'm going to say on behalf of the show, you probably shouldn't. That might be a good idea if you just avoid that, at least you know, for a year or two. I mean, you're, listen, you're from Howell. You've done trashy stuff. That's true, but let's focus on you being trashy this morning. 616-600-0957. Tell Laura the trashy thing that you did so she doesn't feel so bad about what happened in Traverse City. It's Big Joe and Laura on Mix 95.7. Big Joe and Laura on Mix 95.7. Grand Rapids Best Mix. And listen, we try to be fancy and do things when we get invited out, but 
And at our core, Laura and I are probably on the trashier side. It's just what it is. She's from Kentucky. I'm from Howell. And, well, we try our best to adult at times. And Laura just shared a couple of things that happened when she went up to Traverse City to go out, hang out with some of her friends. They actually invited her and James out. And, well, they went to some fancy a fancy golf course. They went out for a dinner. And just overall, Laura did some trashy things like taking a photo of their charcuterie board and then dropping it all over the plate. And golfing, she ended up stealing a bunch of range balls because she lost hers. We're wondering, what is the trashiest thing that you have ever done? You can be anonymous if need be. 616-600-0957. All right, anonymous in Grand Rapids, what's the trashiest or tackiest thing you've ever done? Okay, I don't want to say who I am because I feel like this is pretty bad. But I'm hoping that Laura, as a new parent, I'm hoping you can sympathize. Okay, but deal. When, when we had our first baby, you know, people gave us this really nice, travel changing pad it was like 25 dollars off of our registry yeah um and then a couple months after having the baby i saw a free one on facebook and so i got the free one and then i sanitized the one that we had used for a couple months and i returned it to amazon for a refund you know what there's no shame in that only because it was amazon had it been like a local business or something i would have been a little disappointed because oh no amazon i would not have done so that much money screw them you know what good for you mama Get okay back. hold on <laughs> anonymous i'm not judging but to judge though you're like oh yeah i wouldn't have done that if it was meyer or walmart <laughs> yeah you would have <laughs> I said local business, local business. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is my husband is like my trash meter He tells me whether something is too much of a cheapskate thing to do or not. Yeah. And this one, he said, I am not going to give any comments. Oh, no. <laughs> so hold on. I would like to know if your husband's been the trash meter before. What are things that have passed the test? Hey, we can be trashy. Or is he's like, hun, hun, no way. This is way too trashy. I don't know. Most of the time he's like down for it if it works like if amazon accepts the return he doesn't care it's only trashy right. when you get caught <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> all right anonymous. anonymous well you stay trashy and thanks for listening thank you for calling mm-hmm. you're our kind sure. of people bye bye <laughs> big joe and laura hanging out with you here on mix 95 7 grand rapids best mix and yesterday you uh big joe were scrolling social media and you found this post on instagram that kind of blew both of our minds they said that according to a study 90 percent of women say that it is not remotely attractive whatsoever for guys to play video games uh next on the list they had collecting figurines magic tricks and online trolling all being the top things but 90 over 90 percent of women say they think that playing video games is unattractive and that feels like such a high number i was surprised by it i i don't I feel like a lot of people get upset if their partner's not available because they're always playing games. But out of all those things, I thought you'd be like, yeah, fishing. Like you find that unattractive. I was here like on a Cheating dating profile. Cheating on your girlfriend. I, there's so many things that I can find more attra- unattractive than this. I don't know. I, like, honestly, I feel like if a guy, as long as he isn't like constantly staring at a screen eight hours a day, I don't think there's anything wrong with the guy who plays video games because A, he's going to get a lot of his frustrations out that way. So that way he's actually healthy, finding a healthy way to channel that stuff. B, he has team building skills because if he's playing something like Call of Duty, he's got to work with other people to be good, with, good at it or else he's going to be terrible. So then if he's bad at the video game, maybe that's a red flag. Uh Uh-oh. Time to leave. Honestly, I do all this stuff, like collecting figurines, that kind of stuff. Now, online trolls, absolutely not cool. I don't like that. I think being mean to people is one of the least attractive things. So I can agree with that one, and maybe that's where I come to this. But what do do you think? Like, if you were looking for a dude, Big Joe... What do you think the most unattractive thing for a guy is? Or what do you think women find the most unattractive in your experience? Well, me personally, once again, not judging, but if I'm checking a dude out, uh, if I was interested in him, I would say <laughs> uh, dipping and smoking. I just, and I would say the same thing for a female too, but that, yeah. that's just super unattractive to me, way above all these other things that we've already went over and mentioned. I wonder though, uh, and I'm not saying you don't represent every woman, yeah, but- 
you do love video games. Are you a little skewed? Because if I, I, I guarantee you, like if we woke my wife Lindsay up right now, which would not be very attractive to no, her. No, she would not like that. She would probably complain. But I, man, back in the day, I haven't played Call of Duty in months, but I used to play that daily for hours at a time. That was my my release, my fun time. And I'm, I'm sure she found that a bit unattractive. I mean, I think there's a level. I think that if you're avoiding getting things done, I think if you're not taking care of yourself, I think if you're not taking care of your surroundings, like I have a friend um who has a husband who actually like at seven o'clock he goes to play his video game and you better not bother him and they have like multiple children it doesn't matter if one of the kids is having like an epic meltdown if it's during video game time he's not helping and in that case absolutely but that that could be any activity if he's like out with the boys in the garage drinking beers if he's fishing it's that's like a state of mind more than it is blaming the video game and i think some people like to blame the video game more than the person playing the video game if that makes sense i just i i'm looking at this list again and i'm not trying to beat anybody up that does this it's just interesting to me as a dude that it's video games that are way more unattractive than hey i pulled a rabbit out of my hat I like, know, I'm, like I'm magic back. tricks are so corny you guys don't think the hey, video games are worse they're okay Listen, abracadabra what, yourself on out of here what do you think the least attractive thing a man could do is 616-600-0957 or you can send us a dm right now on the mix 957 app Good morning. We're Big Joe and Laura. We were talking about how video games are apparently the like least attractive thing a guy can do. Yeah, according to a study, 90% of women say that it's not remotely attractive whatsoever for guys to play video games. Next on the list, we're collecting figurines, magic tricks, and online trolling. And I went ahead and said I hard disagree with this. I don't think there's anything wrong with playing video games. In fact, uh, there's way worse things you can get into. Now, we've got Heather in Greenville on the phone. Heather in Greenville, uh, what do you want to say? Video games are attractive. Thank you, Heather. I'm glad that I'm not the only one. (laughs) And I think that it's much more attractive than, like, psychiatric issues or (laughs) like staring at the wall because you're on medication, all of the things. At least, like, they're able to find something to engage in. And my boyfriend puts aside video games for after midnight, and I have older kids. So it's not a matter of putting kids to bed. It's just a choice that he makes to prioritize his family. And if he chooses to stay up late, that just means he has less sleep for school for work. Yeah, that's like that's his time at that point. That's not your problem. Heather, I like that you're exactly. just setting the standard right there. Like, hey, it's this or looking at a wall. <laughs> I mean, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Like, there's alternatives to hobbies. At least there's a hobby because I know the alternative. Kayla and Kalamazoo, what did you want to say? So when it comes to video games, I totally agree with Laura. Um so my partner plays video games and i kind of see it as like a social opportunity for him a lot of times they'll like stay up late at night and have like really in-depth discussions about like life and i see it no different than like me calling my sister and like talking for her for like a couple hours or something like that yeah but We've been dating for about six months and something that is like a total ick for me is when we go for a hike and then all of a sudden he'll just like turn to the side and like start spitting. Oh, God. I'm like, <laughs> why are you doing this? What was the reason? <laughs> no. I dated a guy who would hawk loogies all the time. And let me tell you, it was the most horrible. Like he was the nicest guy. Nothing else wrong with him. But he'd be like, <sighs> and I'm like, I just... I want to die. I want to crawl out of my skin. Why do you do this? Uh, poor James. <laughs> Laura doesn't like Hawk Tua. Okay. No. The- <laughs> that is not what that means. Big Joe's Little Wins happening right now here on Mix 95.7. Grand Rapids Best Mix. You got something that makes you feel good, you're excited about, you're looking forward to just celebrating. Well, that's what we want to do. We want to amplify that and share it with everybody in West Michigan. So give us your little win this morning. Call us at 616-600-0957. Katie in Comstock Park, what's your little win? I actually just changed my major in college. Woo! Okay, what were you? What are you going to major in now? I'm going to be a major in computer programming. (gasps) Good for you. Okay, so uh, do you have a certain emphasis or are you leading IT? Are you doing actual programming programming? 
I want to do like actual programming programming. My goal is to make my own app, but I haven't decided what I want to make yet. That's okay. At least you got the right direction going. Good for you. Can I suggest something? Yeah. Okay. Like I know there's a need for it because I think of myself. Oh no. Can you create an app for men and women? But for me, like this is a man to a woman, my wife. Just like what to say when I want to respond. Like the right thing to say. <laughs> I don't think anyone can help you with that. Big no, Joe. You're no, no, no. Saving. <laughs> it's the app. I run it through. I'm like, my wife said this. This is how I want to respond. How should I respond? And it gives me out like options. You know, you could use AI for that. Kind of like a text chat GBT. Yeah. yeah, but it's your app. Yeah, I feel like that could be useful. All right. Well, just remember me when you launch it and you're a millionaire. A hundred percent. Hey, thank you for listening and for calling in. We're really happy for you. Yeah, thanks for sharing your little win today. You made us happy. All right, thank you guys. What's something good in your life that we can celebrate this morning? That's what we're looking for. Those are Big Joe's little wins. Give us a call, 616-600-0957. We're Big Joe and Laura here on Mix 95.7. And have you ever purposely avoided doing your laundry by just buying new clothes? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe back in the day I bought underwear, but that's because they just were beyond washing. Yeah, uh, socks and underwear both. Been there, done that. But uh, Channing Tatum did this for an entire year. A year? Yeah, he said in an interview recently that... He hates doing laundry more than he could possibly say. One year he called the year of the fresh white tea in which he didn't do laundry all year long and he just wore white t-shirts the whole way through. And that must be like his magic mic air time, right? Just always wearing a white tee? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't think he was wearing any shirts then. He probably saved a lot of money on laundry during the <laughs> magic mic movie. Actually, hey, Channing Tatum, because you hate laundry a little more. Anyway, not the point. Um, I wanted to know, there's got to be a chore like this in your life that you just dread doing. Maybe you've put it off a little too long. It's okay if you want to be anonymous. We're not here to judge. We're going to share our own. Um, but Joe, what is the chore you put off the longest and how long did you put it off? Well, I, I, I don't like often being compared to Channing Tatum, but here's another scenario, right? Where we got to bring it up. <laughs> you and, guys are basically twins. Yep. Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, if I had the money, <laughs> if I had Channing Tatum money, I would have done that. But kind of along the same lines of cleaning something, cleaning my bed sheets. When I was single Joe, it would be... <laughs> God, can my wife leave me for this? No, it would it's too be, late. Statue it would, of limitations. <laughs> it would be at least months at the earliest between changing my bed sheets. Now, months. Do you mean like three months or like 12 months? No, no. Because months could be a wide era of time. No, I would say at least quarterly, maybe twice a year. I just... <laughs> I hear what I would do, kind of like clothing I did. This is single, Joe. I'm a different man. I'm changed. I would do the... <laughs> And I'm because you can't Febreze your bed. You can Febreze your clothes, but you can't do your bed. No, you can't, you can't Febreze your clothes. I mean, you can. You should not Febreze your clothes. I have. Don't judge. But <laughs> yeah, that would be it. Now that I'm married, I guess sticking along with that, I would say cleaning the toilet. Like that's my job on our house. And I'm like, oh, it looks okay, it looks okay. Then just one day, I'm like, oh God, it's a science experiment. Oh God, yeah. Well, at my house, uh, we we have that problem anyway. If you don't clean it pretty much like weekly, it gets <laughs> gross because we don't have like the proper ventilation in our upstairs bathroom, which is where the shower is. So like that toilet just, it's a science experiment on its best day. I bleach that thing at least once a week, like heavily, and I'm still fighting it constantly. So I understand that. But, you know, my my least favorite chore is also bathroom related, but it's not the toilet. I don't mind the toilet. I wipe as I go. I keep that thing clean. No problems. However, I hate cleaning the shower more than anything on the planet. I hate getting down there and scrubbing and getting chemicals like on your hands and maybe sometimes on your knees if you're really bad at it like I am and somehow I've like put my knees in bleach and now my knees are burning and I just I almost I tried to convince my husband for like two months at one point to let me buy this scrubber brush thing I saw on TikTok that basically it's like a it's like a weed whacker but for inside scrubbing. Wait does it have like a power? Like, do you hook it up to power? Like yeah it's battery powered yeah and it's just and I was like oh I need that for the shower and he's like that you do not you don't you don't need that for the shower you want that but that's just another stupid single use <laughs> appliance we do not need in this house and he's not wrong but i think i would be much better like i think i've gone up to six months as much as i hate to say that out oh, loud that's, that's nothing my not, buddy not the shower showers are so gross no they are my buddy adam and this makes more sense probably for guys stereotypically even though women you could be gross too yeah my buddy adam kevin jeff mosh when they all still live on like swensburg uh, down by like riverside park yeah that bathroom was disgusting. Like, I think black mold was growing in there until his now wife Rachel said, uh-uh, 
this is getting cleaned up. It was so you, Rachel, you angel, give yourself a break on that one. But I mean, it is something that we all hate doing, right? We push it off as long as we can. Absolutely. So we want to know uh, what's the, the, the longest you've gone without doing a chore. You can send us a DM or give us a call at 616-600-0957. It is Big Joe and Laura here on Mix 95.7, Grand Rapids Best Mix. And recently, Channing Tatum says that he is purposely avoiding has purposely avoided doing laundry for over a year at one point in his life <laughs> by just wearing a white t-shirt constantly. Like he just kept buying new white t-shirts, getting rid of the old ones and never washing them. So I wanted to know how long have you put off doing a chore because you hated doing it? You can always give us a call at 616-600-0957 or you can send us a DM inside the Mix 957 app. Now I said, I hate cleaning the shower to the point that I went like six months uh, much younger in life when I was living by myself because I just didn't want to get down there and scrub and scrub and scrub. Now, when I was single, Joe, definitely not married, Joe, I get yelled at for this still to this day. It would be changing the bed sheets. I didn't mind doing laundry. It was a pain going up and down the stairs in the apartment and sure. having the quarters. But the big thing is uh, I just would smell I'm like... <sniffs> Yeah, these are ripe. We, oh. we better change these out. Yeah, that sweaty, awful smell. Oh, God. That okay. Stank. So, what was the longest you put off doing a chore? 616 600 0957. What's up, Kim in Wyoming? I wanted to say on the cleaning the showers, um, I'm trying to teach my granddaughter that when you get in the shower, take your Mr. Clean bar or whatever you're cleaning it with and clean while you're showering and then throw everything on the side and you got your shower clean and you're taking the shower at the same time. That's genius, Kim. I never thought about the fact that I can do them both at the same time instead of making my life miserable one day a month or whatever. Kim? <laughs> yeah, take the Mr. Clean bar, put it down on the floor of the shower, take your foot, scrub the shower floor. <sighs> Kim just saved my life. Kim, that's a great idea oh, in theory. One. No, but, it's but a great no. idea, Joe. In, in practice, Laura or me doing that in the shower would gonna, slip, fall, and yeah, hit our say, head. I'm going to break an ankle. Oh, no. you got to be careful. you got to hang on, but you're getting it all done at once. Kim, I need to borrow your shower bar. Can I hang up? Can I get one? <laughs> Kim, you're Have the a best. Great day. You too. We love you. Thanks Bye. For we love you. Bye. Bye. Sandra in Grand Rapids, <laughs> what did you want to say? Okay, so one thing that I'm bad about is the recycling cans. And they, and it's a chore, and I will leave them in the garage forever and ever until it almost takes over the garage. Oh, my God, and then, the same way, Sandra. <laughs> oh, and then going to return them is like having to look at my life over again. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, I drank that, yep drink that too and just stand there and look at all the things I've consumed. Or what about so, the Amazon boxes you've had to break down that you're like, oh uh, God, yeah, I bought too yep. much. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's just like reminds you, but I'm too, I hate not returning things like Amazon boxes or recycling things. So, yep, they least, just, it's like my personal shame though. Well, at least you're making <laughs> so, it better by actually recycling all of it. Like you can feel like 2% better for it. At least you're yes. not making more trash on the planet. But I'm the same way. And I've got like 60 broken down boxes that I keep forgetting to restack the recycling. And I never remember which week yep. it is. And it's just, yeah, I'll get to it eventually in the next five years, I swear. <laughs> okay. You'll be good. Probably better than me then. So, Sandra, <laughs> thanks for sharing your shame this morning. You're the best, Sandra. Yes. Thank you. Yes. No problem. Have a great morning. <laughs> Have Bye. a good day. Kelly and Ada, what's going on? I had a tip for Sandra. The returnables, have her call a local school and have an athletic team pick up her returnables and they get the money for it oh that's like a thing yeah they'll come to her house she'll donate all her cans you know they come around to your house and ask for them anyway oh my gosh okay i'm totally yeah. doing this hold on this is a side hustle kelly do you think i could pass for a middle school aged boy <laughs> we know you can't joe <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, that's a, that, a amazing tip because now I'm going to take advantage of that too because I have a whole can full of cans and I feel bad that I keep forgetting to put it out. So, uh, right, do you have a, right. Do you have a team you recommend? Well, it's where you live. Okay. So you know, like if she's in Northview, call the high school. If she's in Rockford, you know, call their high school and say we would love to donate to some team or just the athletic department. We right need now. to start a big Joe and Laura softball team. <laughs> <laughs> Take all the cool gear we could buy with those cans. So we'd be really bad at softball. We'd look good, though. <laughs>
Laura would still have to return the cans, Joe. Yeah, I know. I didn't see that's the problem. I don't, I'm not willing. It's not worth the softball yeah. team, Joe. I'm Kelly, sorry. Kelly, this is a lot of work. <laughs> it's not. It's one phone call. <laughs> It's time to play Laura Can't Lose on Mix 95.7. Here's how it happens. You'll have one minute to answer five questions. You can pass if you need to, and we'll come back if time allows. A tie goes to Laura because, well, her name's on the show. Here's who's playing Laura Can't Lose today. Welcoming him back for a second day in a row playing Laura Can't Lose is Hector in Grand Rapids and that Michigan Lottery jackpot, 160 bucks. Welcome back, Hector. Thank you, thank you. You sound I, so calm and cool and collected. It's that Navy in him. He's a former Navy, and, and you know, they, they, the military uh, ability to chill out while I'm, like, freaking out over here that I'm going to finally ruin this jackpot. All right, Hector, let's get this game going, man. Kick Laura out of the studio. Bye, Laura. Adios. Walk a little slow today. Maybe she's off her game. We'll find out. Here is your first question. What were the Hawaiian Islands formed by? Volcano. Question two. Which American road runs from Chicago to Los Angeles? Oh. Um, uh, give me a pass for now? Yep. Question three. In the song Margaritaville, what was Jimmy Buffett looking for? Searching for his lost shake of salt. Question four. What is the name of Billie Eilish's producer and songwriting brother? Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Uh, pass. Question five. What horoscope sign is a bull? Taurus. All right. Question so number two, two again. What American yeah. road runs from Chicago to Los Angeles? Route 66. Question number four. What is the name of Billie Eilish's producer and songwriting brother? Um, Tom. <laughs> Tom Ellis. <laughs> Tom, okay. I'm going to bring Laura in. Laura! La, 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 Laura! Well... You have a chance today to beat our good friend Hector in Grand Rapids. Oh. He went three for five. Oh, so there's a hole for sure. All right, Hector, let's see how hard these questions are. Question one, Laura. Yikes. What were the Hawaiian Islands formed by? Volcanoes. Correct, one, one. Question two, which American road runs from Chicago to Los Angeles? Route 66. That is also correct, 2-2. Two, two. Question three, in the song Margaritaville, what was Jimmy Buffett looking for? His lost shaker of salt. Yes, uh, Hector did a much better job of singing that answer. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we have a tie, 3-3, three, three, so I let's see. I almost sang it. I didn't want Joe to yell at me, so I'm glad someone did. I'm not going to yell at you. <laughs> I would have yelled. And uh, question number four, what is the name of Billie Eilish's producer and songwriting brother? Phineas. Ooh, that oh is God. a uh, correct answer. <laughs> Hector said Tom. <laughs> yeah, Tom yeah. is a great answer, Hector. I respect it. Laura <laughs> has got a four to three lead. Let's see how question five, what she does with this one. Which horoscope sign is a bull? Taurus. Yeah. That is incorrect. What? It is what? Aries. Horses are also That's bulls. That's the ram. Yeah, Aries is a ram. Yeah. Well, if I messed up my horoscopes and you both got that wrong <laughs> or right, that means that Laura still wins today five to four. Yeah. So. Yeah, Aries is a ram. I just Google it. Taurus is the bull, sir. Uh, <laughs> sorry. My questions must be in retrograde this morning. Hector, my friend, you put up a good battle, but unfortunately, Laura beat you five to four. There we go. Correct answers, at least. <laughs> because Laura can't lose. <laughs> oh, Hector. Listen, if you want to be like Hector and try to take me on for that $165 with Michigan Lottery tickets, I don't think anyone's ever going to get it. Go ahead. Take a swing. 616-600-0957. It is Big Joe and Laura here on Mix 95.7, Grand Rapids Best Mix. And, uh, well, Laura has a child I don't. But the one thing we do have in common is we're both happily married. That is correct. Very, very happily married. But uh, tomorrow's a big day in my household. It's our ninth wedding anniversary, which is just, for me, that's insane. My parents were never even married. They were on and off again my entire life, just chaos. And it blows my mind that some I'm doing something I thought I never could. And it hasn't been easy. But I guess the one thing that I am asking right now, as far as being married and anniversaries, is Laura... 
You've heard about like for your first year, your second year, your third year, you get a specific gift, like a themed one. Yeah, it's it's a long, a long standing tradition that on each year you're supposed to get the whatever. Like the first one I know is paper. The second is cotton. I don't know past there because I haven't yeah. gotten that far. <laughs> but when I get there, I know way later, it's like the 60th is like diamond and things like that. Yeah, if, if you can stand somebody for 60 years, they should get anything. It should be a new house if, that, if that's what you want. Stand someone. My grandparents were married 75 years. And let me tell you, they were besties. They never argued. They never had problems. They truly were just like that's, the ideal couple. That's amazing that long. And uh, that's not how I grew up. But hey. The question I am wondering is, for me, the ninth year anniversary is pottery or wicker. That's what I I found, and my anniversary is tomorrow, so I don't know how I'm going to get anything custom made. But I just feel like getting a gift or something that's meaningful to them is cool. But does anybody, is that like this really old school, does anybody actually do the, we did this for our fifth year, we did this for our tenth year? I mean, my husband and I so far have. I know we're really early in, but I have full intentions. I I don't make the entire present that. Like, I'll get one thing in the theme, and then I'll get one one thing that I actually wanted to get him. And last year for paper, I got him a print of the song from our wedding song. And it was just like a really neat thing on Etsy. I got it printed. I had it framed and it it sits in our office now, actually. And then he got a very similar version, basically, that is now up in our kitchen. And I like having both of them. I thought it was really fun to see how he took that and and made it a gift. And I almost see it as like a, a puzzle, like, ooh, how do I take this thing and make it into something he likes? Like, I already know what we're doing this year for cotton. Um, I have no idea what he's going to get me, but I know what I would like to get him that we would both enjoy. And I, I'm worried he's listening right now, so I'm not going to say okay, what it yeah, is. Okay, yeah, you but, don't have to ruin it. I don't yeah. want to put you on the spot like that. But So you're not going to do wicker pottery, nothing. You're just going to skip it. I don't even think Lindsay would want wicker or pottery. I, I mean, like, what do I do? Do I take her to the pottery barn? I mean, you could get her a pottery barn gift certificate. I, I guess. I guess I'm, I just... You can get her some nice new porch furniture. Wicker is hard. Wicker is a very difficult one. I'll give you that. Pottery, like, get her a vase. It's a really nice flowers. And then something else. Like, it's not hard to follow the theme. I'm not even opposed to it. I just feel like in my marriage, in my house, we don't really seem to use them. Going back to whatever year the wood is for an anniversary, I got this awesome, like, pieces of wood, like hundreds of them, of different countries around the world. And it's still in a box. To be fair, we moved around a, bu- a bunch, but I'm just curious. But Six one, Go ahead. Is it not that you gave a bad gift and it's not the problem of the oh, gift? Oh, no. This was a good gift and it cost uh, like- But, but oh, it's still in the box, Joe. I I know, but I don't know why. Mm. Probably because we moved so much. Anywho, 616-600-0957. Are you like Laura and James and this is something you really like to do and there's special meaning behind it or- are you kind of jaded like me? And that sounds so bad because I love my wife, but I'm just like, can I just get you a card and a get like some money? Oh, Do you really want pottery no and wicker? Left. No romance left in your marriage. 616-600-0957. Big Joe and Laura here on Mix 95.7 Grand Rapids Best Mix. And tomorrow, big day in our household, me and my wife, Lindsay, celebrate nine years of wedding bliss. Congratulations. Thank you. I thought you were going to laugh at that when I said wedding bliss. Well, it's because it's wedded bliss, but I appreciate oh. that you tried. Well, didn't realize you were so formal about it. But uh, the one thing that I'm kind of struggling with, and I'm curious, uh, 616-600-0957, when it's a certain anniversary, like the first one is what, paper? That's the first yes, year? Yes, your first, your second year is cotton. I can't tell you past that because I haven't gotten past I, my second, second anniversary yet. So. I can tell you the ninth anniversary, I looked it up, it's supposed to be either uh, wicker or pottery. Okay. So I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to do for that tomorrow. Well, uh, you could uh, give suggestions or say whether or not you actually believe in this because, Joe, you kind of generally think this is silly, right? Well, we just, we, I've done it for all the other stuff, but we don't really use any of it. I'm trying, I, like, I <laughs> Uh, about a wood thing, like of all, like the like the world, like you put it on the wall in an office. We never put any of that up. Oh well, let's see six one six six hundred zero nine five seven, or you can send us a DM in the Big Study five seven app, like Aaron and Holland, who says I'm an amazing gift giver. I suggest a beautiful vase with the same flowers she had in her wedding bouquet. Ooh, we Aaron. still have those. That's a good idea. That's a really great idea. Now uh, we also have Cassie at Rockford on the phone. Cassie at Rockford, uh, what do you think Joe should do? I had an idea for the pottery thing. Ooh, okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been to the mud room on the East Beltline, 
but you can paint and make pottery there. And it is super fun, and it'd be a super cute, like, anniversary date idea, maybe yeah. with, like, dinner or something. See, Joe, that would be really cute for you guys to go and, like, make a plate or do something fun that you could keep yeah, around. And, I, and, and then you get to have a date night, too. And it's not as stressful as, like, building Ikea furniture. So I think you guys could actually exactly. enjoy this. Yeah, and then I figured, like, then you don't have to worry about her not liking it because she can pick out her own pottery item and paint it however she wants it to look well that's a legit concern cassie now my question is this <laughs> then i guess sticking with this what is it is it the movie ghost but i think that's a great oh, idea yeah. <laughs> like can you envision yeah. just me and Lindsay, and i'm like patrick swayze just all sexy like you know just working on things <laughs> using our hands together See, look, to shape you might it actually you might actually have a good anniversary cassie may have saved your anniversary with the suggestion <laughs> joe i just as soon as you said you didn't know what to do i thought of that and i was like i gotta call oh it's genius <laughs> cassidy thank you for sharing with us this morning we appreciate you and i hope you have a great yeah. rest of your day thanks you guys too